Going ahead on 12 News, cut through the church parking lot to avoid traffic. In Maple Grove, there's a blessing for that. Then legislation to protect puppies. All rescuers say as soon as we're out of business, we're all going to be so happy. But first, testimony begins over a controversial and often emotional issue facing Minnesotans. We're at the end of the line, um, and we don't want to move. We don't want to split up our family. 12 News starts right now. Hello everyone, a medical marijuana bill clears its first House committee hurdle. 20 states already legalize medical marijuana. Beth Hundley of Golden Valley hopes that Minnesota will become number 21. Reporter Sonia Goins has more. This is a huge win and it just sets the momentum for this bill to pass. Beth Hundley knows that the bill still has a long way to go. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies. But she says she's optimistic and hopes her daughter Harlow will be able to get the help she needs. This is huge for Harlow. We're running out of options for her and like the testimonies last night, so many families are running out of options. These drugs are not working. <coughs> Two-year-old Harlow suffers from Dravet syndrome, a rare form of epilepsy. She has many seizures each day. We're at the end of the line and we don't want to move. We don't want to split up our family to move across the country for something, you know, that we could have here in Minnesota. Harlow takes at least five medicines a day that make her feel lethargic. That's why her family is pushing for medical marijuana. It just seems ridiculous that um, other states have this opportunity and we cannot have that option here. If the bill passes, it would allow doctors to prescribe marijuana for a variety of medical conditions. But some law enforcement groups are worried legal marijuana could end up in the wrong hands. However, the Minnesota Sheriff's Association says it's willing to discuss marijuana extracts in pills, liquid, or inhaler form. Governor Dayton needs to listen to these families and listen to these stories and understand the need. The Minnesota Sheriff's Association also says there needs to be more studies done on the long-term effects of medical marijuana. Governor Dayton says he will not sign a bill without the support of law enforcement. Meanwhile, the bill now moves on to the House Government Operations Committee. Mike? All right, thanks, Sonia. Lawmakers are also hearing longtime pleas from Plymouth and Maple Grove to add a third lane to Interstate 494. This committee needs to know and understand that it traditionally is probably one of the worst, if not the worst, bottleneck currently in the Twin Cities because it's only two lanes. Maple Grove Mayor Mark Stephenson and Plymouth Mayor Kelly Slavic testified before the House Transportation Policy Committee to express support for a bill that would allow MnDOT to add a third lane on 494 between Highway 55 and Fish Lake Road. MnDOT had planned to build a dynamic shoulder lane on 494 that would only open during heavy traffic. But last month they decided to reconsider the plan and evaluate building a general purpose third lane instead. Really, the issue is we need a permanent lane like the rest of the corridor. A dynamic shoulder is a temporary <coughs> fix designed to last about 15 to 20 years. We need a permanent solution, and I think it's fair to do it right the first time. The House committee approved the bill following the mayor's testimony. If approved by the legislature, the project still needs Metropolitan Council approval and a $25 million funding source. A bill to regulate so-called puppy mills was heard by a state house committee today. The bill would require breeding facilities for cats and dogs to be licensed and inspected regularly. Reporter Cassie Bonstrom spoke to a local animal rescue group who says the changes can't come soon enough. Hi, baby. Little Jolly Rancher lives in a constant state of fear, always shaking and appearing skittish. She was not socialized as a young dog. She, um doesn't, you know, never has really trusted people. Rachel Mayrose with Secondhand Hounds rescued the miniature schnauzer from an auction a year ago. Though she's in good hands now, the pup will likely never recover from the five years spent in a puppy mill. You really can't take that away from them. Mayro says it's common for animals rescued from inhumane puppy mills to have severe behavioral and physical problems. You get these dogs that are emaciated, they have eyes missing, their jaws are broken, um, and you know, they're still breeding them like that. A bill currently being considered in the House would regulate breeding facilities in Minnesota. 
It would require facilities of a certain size to be licensed and inspected regularly, neither of which is required now. The bill sets up what I think are pretty reasonable standards of care. Representative Mike Freiberg of Golden Valley is one of the bill's authors. He says the animal cruelty laws currently in place are not doing enough to prevent abuse. It's a complaint-based system, so the only times you end up hearing about it or anything ends up happening uh, to enforce it is really in a catastrophic situation. If the bill is passed, Mayro says it could prevent cases like Jolly Ranchers. It may mean less work for her rescue group, but she says that's just fine. All rescuers say as soon as we're out of business, we're all going to be so happy. Um, hopefully this is a step towards that. In Minnetonka, I'm Cassie Bonstrom, 12 News. Several breeders testified at today's committee hearing that they are already regulated by several other agencies. They said several parts of the proposed bill are unnecessary and would negatively impact their businesses. Governor Mark Dayton is calling it the unsession. The governor wants to do away with hundreds of laws that are considered outdated or just plain silly. Right now there are more state laws regulating the telegraph industry than there are laws regulating the internet. The governor also wants to do away with a 1937 law that makes it illegal to drive a car in neutral. Yet another law makes it a crime to carry fruit in a wrong size container. Eliminating unneeded laws is part of Governor Dayton's effort to make state government more efficient. An organization that treats children with mental illness has officially withdrawn plans to build a treatment center in Golden Valley. The original plans by Lifespan had prompted some residents to raise concerns about kids in treatment endangering their neighborhood. The discussion led to an apology from Golden Valley's mayor. Lifespan currently has two metro locations. It had been looking for a site in the northwest suburbs because it felt that area was underserved. A retail space in Maple Grove is moving from outdoor gear to women's clothing. Gander Mountain closed a store at the Maple Grove Crossings Mall more than two years ago. The company said the space was too small. Dress Barn will soon be moving into the 30,000 square foot space. Work is underway now and Dress Barn is expected to open in May. A nearby store in Crystal will also stay open. In the Robbinsdale School District, a snow day in February will add a school day to the calendar in June. You might remember a storm on February 21st that dumped more than eight inches of snow in the northwest metro. Robbinsdale schools were canceled for the sixth day this season. The district has announced plans now to make up that lost day. June 2nd will be an added school day for high school seniors. Classes will also be held June 5th for grades kindergarten through 11th grade. The district had to add the days to meet the required number of instructional days for students. Well, are you taxed or overtaxed on taxes? Up next, Money Savers has some tips to get your refund hassle-free. And then a little bit later in sports, Park Center gives top seed Champlain Park a stare in the boys' basketball playoffs. But first, no more sub-zero nights in sight. Temperatures are climbing. We're even looking at 40s next week. There's no spring break for rising gasoline prices. In fact, prices in the Twin Cities are up five cents over yesterday and up 36 cents over just one month ago. We found prices at 3.59 per gallon of regular and leaded at stores in Brooklyn Center, Crystal, and in New Hope. AAA says prices could continue to rise given the uncertainty to global oil supplies due to the crisis in Ukraine. The deadline to file your taxes is getting closer every day. You have about six weeks left to file your taxes, and filing early could benefit you financially. Reporter Shannon Slatten explains how in Money Savers. Filing your income taxes early is the smart thing to do. We spoke with financial advisor Skip Johnson from Great Waters Financial to find out why. The IRS says it takes, on average, 13 hours for a family to prepare their taxes. So if you rush, you could make mistakes, which would you know, lead to an audit. It could lead to penalties or worse. The faster you file, the faster you can get your refund. The IRS says 9 out of 10 taxpayers get refunds in less than 21 days when they use e-file with direct deposit. You can also track your refund with a tool on the IRS website called Where's My Refund. You can start checking the status within 24 hours of filing. But filing early is also the easiest way to prevent a growing type of fraud. Tax ID theft has actually exploded in the last few years. It was up 60%. And that's simply criminals filing a return in your name, 
expecting to get your refund. So if you filed early, there's no chance that um, any criminal could get your refund. Once your tax return is filed and the information is fresh in your mind, Johnson says this is the time to adjust your withholdings and think about those long-term savings and investments. For Money Savers, Shannon Slatten, 12 News. The IRS reports 95% of tax returns filed so far have been done electronically, and so far the average refund is a little more than $3,000. Coming up, a parking lot problem in Maple Grove that turned into an opportunity for spiritual reflection. But first in sports, Osseo and Maple Grove battle for a spot in their section boys basketball championship game. John Jacobson with the highlights when we come back. Time for everyone to bring their A game with mm -hmm. basketball playoffs underway and fans treated to a pretty good one last yeah, night. Yeah, the great one, the first game especially at uh, Rogers High School. After two one-sided wins for Champlain Park over Park Center during the regular season, the two Brooklyn Park-based high schools tipped off for a third time this season in the Section 5 Class 4A semifinals. Good start for the Rebels in this one. JT Gibson hits a three as Champlain Park takes it 8-0 lead in the game's first three minutes. But the Pirates start to lock down on defense. Amani Hooker the block, and then the pass goes ahead to Arion Farrar for the layup. The Pirates lead by one. It's a two-point game at halftime. Huge second half for Park Center senior Isaac Matthews. He gets the put back here for two. The Pirates are up 39-38. Champlain Park then goes on a 14-4 run. Jeremy Johnson with one of his four threes in the game puts the Rebels up 52-43. Park Center counters with a 10-0 scoring run, capped by the Matthews hoop and one. And this is a great second half. Eventually, though, Champlain Park takes the lead back for good, and they hit seven free throws in the game's final 45 seconds, including that one from Ian Smith. And the Rebels squeeze past Park Center 79-71. Maple Grove and Osseo meeting in the second semifinal. Osseo starts strong. Ian Tyson gets the pass inside to Connor Kittleson for two and a quick 6-0 lead. But it's a good first half for Maple Grove. Matt Lindgren nails a three, and it's tied up at 14. Isaac Collins drives and gets it to Reed Nico, who throws down the dunk. Plus a foul, the Crimson lead 25-21 at the half. Nasio comes out strong after the second half. Giovanni Pastrano with a breakaway dunk, and it's tied at 27. Pass gets tipped, but still finds Elliot Kane. He buries one of his three second-half trays and scores 14 points total. Wheeler Baker starts slow, but makes some clutch hoops, including this baseline drive. Osseo holds Maple Grove to 18 points after halftime, and the Orioles win 55-43. That sets up Friday's championship game as Osseo meets Champlain Park at 7 o'clock at Rogers High School. The Orioles and Rebels split during the season. In Class 1A, Maranatha Christian Academy of Brooklyn Park is looking to get back to state. Mustangs hosting Southwest Christian in the Section 4A semifinals. Southwest in white. Nice shot fake down low by Kevin Horner, who scores the hoop, plus the foul. The Stars lead 14 to 12. The Mustangs come back and take a four-point lead. Demario Armstrong drives from the wing and hits the pull-up jumper for two. Then off an inbounds play late in the first half, Josh Goldschmidt will catch it and hit the quick three and put the Mustangs up by 13. Then Watch will get the steal in the backcourt and just misses on the layup at the buzzer. 13-point game again at halftime. Second half of play, and Armstrong gets another backcourt steal for the Mustangs. This one goes in. Maranatha lead 13 points again. Jeremiah Hansen at all scores with 27 points. Maranatha wins, and they move on with a 68-46 win. In the other 4A semifinal, Heritage Christian loses to Minneapolis North, 73-58. The Eagles finish the season with a 21-7 record. North and Maranatha play for a trip to State Friday at 545 at McAllister College in St. Paul. The girls' section playoffs tipped off Tuesday night for a couple of local teams, including Armstrong, as the Falcons travel to Edina in the Section 6 tournament. Good low post defense by the Falcons. Miranda Robinson with a block, and that starts a break the other way. Ending in a Hannah Sasek layup plus a foul. Sasek leads the Falcons in scoring with 10 points. But this is mostly Dinah's night. Freshman Annika Jank with a 14-footer for two. The Hornets lead by eight. 
Joe Morton gets a put back of a Shannon Good missed shot for two. Edina is up 32 15 at the half. And it doesn't get any better in the second half for the Falcons. Jank scores 19 points and Edina eliminates Armstrong 46 22. Hopkins did win in section six, beating St. Louis Park. Champlain Park's girls are playing well coming into the postseason. The Rebels won four straight to close out the regular season and then help push them into the number two seeding in Section 5-4A behind Centennial. The Rebels had some ups and downs, finishing with a 15-10 and 10 regular season mark. And they say that's helped them to be battle-tested. I think it got a little rocky. We were starting to get bothered, but we still pulled it together. And I think we're, st we're starting to get going now and starting to go on a run. So I think it all happened for a reason, and now we're starting to get up there. I said, girls, if you would have asked before the season where, where do you think you'll, we'll end up and where you want to end up, they would probably would have said the number two seed. And after all the ups and downs and after all the ebbs and flows, that's where we ended up. Kind of kind of crazy. We got hot in the last week. Champlain Park hosts Irondale in the quarterfinals as the Section 5 tournament gets started Thursday night. And that's a good sports for today. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. Still ahead, blessed in a parking lot. A Maple Grove church takes a spiritual approach to solving a traffic issue. Their peaceful Ash Wednesday solution when we come back. On this Ash Wednesday, a Maple Grove Lutheran church offers a moment of reflection and connection amid the rush of daily life. Today is a day that gives us wisdom to reflect on our time that is limited and how we are using the gift of the life God's given us. For the second year, Maple Grove Lutheran Church offered up an Ash Wednesday drive through blessing to those passing through the intersection of County Road 30 and Elm Creek Boulevard where the church is located. The idea for drive through blessings came after the church was frustrated about drivers repeatedly cutting through their church parking lot to shave a few seconds off their commute. So the church decided to welcome them instead with blessings on special occasions such as Ash Wednesday. The moment of reflection also serves an important purpose for those whose busy schedules might prohibit, prohibit them from attending services. And I, the parents' schedules are so crammed right now, to spend the five minutes and actually be able to get the blessing is wonderful. I think this is a great idea. That's absolutely what we recognize is how busy people are. But the connection isn't fast. It might take a few minutes, but the connection reaches much deeper. Close to 50 drivers came through for the blessing. And one neat story from last year was a woman who had a special needs child and was able to come out for the blessing and might not have been able to come to services. So That's a neat outreach. I it wonder, is. maybe some other churches will steal that idea. Jump on. That's <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> That's all the news for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Community Corner is coming up next. We'll see you again tomorrow.